Hi, uh, I'm making this video today for my good friend Tom and my good friend Danny because they wanted to know some stuff out here. Uh, they're scared to death of poison ivy and poison oak and they want to know what jewelweed looks like so they can find something to take care of it. And I've got my friend Rich who's the plant expert here with me and I'm going to let him do the talking and I'll kind of zoom in on stuff so you can see what stuff looks like and there's different varieties so we're going to get them too. All right, so first thing is, is uh, if you see a vine, if it's growing and hanging off of the tree, it, chances are it's going to be a grapevine or something in that family. The only two in this North America that are going to be hairy and attached to the tree are poison ivy and, um, and trumpet vine. This is a poison ivy. I've never seen a trumpet vine get anywhere near this size. You'll notice that the old saying, leaves of three, let it be, and you'll notice that all these leaves exist in clusters of three, and if Dean comes up the tree, these lower leaves are all you can see right here. Since this is a honey locust and has this type of leaf here, well, this is all poison ivy. Later on, it's going to develop blossoms. they will be white, and it's going to get white berries that are going to dangle down. If we come down here to the ground, and Dean will show you, by the way, to see how big the vine is. It's a pretty good sized vine. Now here's poison ivy. <clears throat> Scientists have discovered that poison ivy and poison oak are basically the same plant. It morphs when it's in sun versus shade. So here we have a thin one that's trying to find something to grow. Over on this one, if Dean comes over here, Here's one that's sitting out. It is not attaching it to anything, so it's growing as a shrub because it's getting sunlight. It's not trying to attach to the forsythia above it. This is becoming poison oak. You'll notice that it is a shrub. It's freestanding. It is not trying to climb any tree. The leaves will begin to change. Now, I can't say. There, there are several different sub-varieties of poison oak. You can see the texture of the leaf. If I bring Dean over this way a little bit, <clears throat> here's some that's in sunlight more. You can begin to see this different shape that it has, and this you'll see often when it's in sun and becoming poison oak. You'll see that we have a much different texture leaf. Um, this will also develop a real bumpy surface, and everybody I know absolutely hates it because when it gets that look to it, they say that it is the worst to get. And we could show you some of that, but I'm not going to worry about it right now. But poison oak, poison ivy, the saying of leaves of three, let it be. Always a safe bet. I could show you some berries that are going to be in three leaves. Unless you're picking them, they're going to cut you, so let it be. Like right here. But that's got five, but you're going to see berries, and it'll often have three. So... Leaves of three, let it be. Okay. And we're going to walk back down towards the campsite because there's some jewel weed down there and we'll show you what it looks like. Thorns. This nice little shrub. There's nothing that looks like a vine about that shrub, except for the vine that's growing on it.
raspberries. Three leaves. Okay. Now we're here at the, the jewelweed plant that we can find. Yeah, so jewelweed, jewelweed, jewelweed. <clears throat> now if you can see this little flower here, I can get zoomed in on it. It looks kind of like a, uh, what'd you say, a thing off of Victrola. And it comes down to a little bugle type. It's curly cue at the bottom. Those are either yellow or orange. And the leaves kind of shape themselves around each flower. You got one here, one there. Uh, where are we at? There's, these are the little flowers on them. And this is, you want to talk some more about that too, Rich? Well, this is a wild impatience. So if you go, go out and you can buy impatience, which is the flower your wife would have, your mother, <clears throat> those do not contain quite as much of the compound that's going to neutralize the effect of the urushiol oil, but they'll still have it, so you can always get those. Um, this is a wild impatience. This is a wild impatient. We've got one over here. Once you learn to identify jewelweed, you can go with it. Uh, jewelweed ha is like a succulent. If you look at the stem, you can see it has a translucence to it. And what you would do would be, I don't want to pull a lot of this off, so I'm just going to pull a little bit. If I had poison ivy and I want a bigger piece for that, I would break the stem open and squeeze the juice. Like I've got a spider bite here that's gone away. I would put that on it and it would take it away very quickly. Now, granted I want a lot more of the sap than I put on, <clears throat> but bear in mind that this is a wild impatient. That's a flower, okay? It's very, very easy to kill a flower. The difference between a flower and a weed is you can't kill a weed when you try it and you can't keep a flower living when you try. So this is hard to kill, or easy to kill. Poison ivy, almost impossible. So this is a plant that you really would love to have wherever you are in the woods. The only other thing I would like to get, if we can get one more shot. Okay. <coughs> bring you back here, because I know it's here. Okay, this will work. Well, let's get on a tree. Find another tree, more time. This vine right here, this big one, this is poison ivy. You're not going to see the leaves until you go way up in the tree. This thinner vine here is, you'll notice it's got the five leaves, and I see a lot of people in this area refer to this as poison oak. This is a Virginia creeper. So remember we talked about leaves of three, let it be. Leaves of five are not a problem. So this is not poison oak. Nothing, no way, no how. But it will grow with these little hairy vines right here. So, and it attaches to the tree. That grapevine right here, the Dean's going to, you know, it sits up in the tree, but it's not attached to the tree. And this stuff, you can actually take the vines of the Virginia creeper and use it for cordage for binding together a shelter. Okay. Okay. This is some more, just a little shot of our campsite here. That's the, the branch that runs down behind it where all the water runs when you get a big rain here. And we're standing in the hammock area. <laughs> and right here is where Rich had his hammock last night between this tree. Between the one we just looked at. Between the poison ivy tree and the, and the what is that? A, or, it's a hedge. It's a hedge, yeah. Osage orange right there. Yes, sir. <laughs> there's, so many there's so many different ones in here, I can't keep track of all of it. 
Okay. Well, Tom and Dan, now you know. So, bookmark this and keep it on your fancy phone, and you'll be able to keep from getting that stuff on your skin. So, from the Midwestern woods, this is Dean and Rich saying adios for this week. Bye.